Hey, good evening. It's Beth here and I wanted to share some more this evening with you. It is September and September is Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome Awareness Month. So today I'm back with you and I want to share some of the treatment options for PCOS. So the bad news is once you have PCOS, you're stuck with it the rest of your life. There is no cure. There may never be a cure. And honestly, I think that is part of this process of knowing that you have PCOS and then just taking everything with it in stride. And part of that is figuring out that, okay, there's no cure. I'm stuck with it. Now I have to learn to live with it. And so, I want to share a few of the treatment options um, that I can or that I know of with you. I hope that in the future that they, they will find a cure for it. I hope that there will be better treatment options. Um, and you know, this is what I know right now. Um, unfortunately, a lot of doctors that um, a lot of doctors that you go to are trained in medicine and that is what their first defense is going to be. Um, they're going to offer up medication for you. So you need to know that going in. If you are solely set on helping your symptoms um, holistically, then I would encourage you not to go to a regular OBGYN or family doctor or endocrinologist. I would encourage you to go see a functional medicine doctor. And unfortunately, those are gonna be out of pocket. Um, insurance does not cover that most of the time unless you have some awesome insurance. And if you do, I wanna know about it. <laughs> um, however, um, so just so that you're prepared, medication is probably going to be their first offering to you. So to understand the treatment options, let's go back to the symptoms because the, the treatment options are going to help suppress our symptoms. And that's exactly what happens. We don't get to cure our symptoms, we get to suppress them. Um, so, symptoms of irregular period. The first option is obviously going to be the birth control pill. Um, these are offered at an early age, especially if you're diagnosed with PCOS at an early age. Um, I was diagnosed at 15 and they offered it right then and there to me. So um, birth control pill, that is going to help regulate the cycle. It's going to allow you to have a normal cycle. Um, it's going to help with the heaviness of it because most girls with PCOS have a very heavy period, um, which is no fun <laughs> and been there, done that. Um, so that is going to be the first option. Sometimes women might choose a progesterone only pill instead of the um, combination pill which is progesterone and um, estrogen but either way you go off that pill you're still going to have irregular periods um let's see the next symptom would be like high androgen so high testosterone in your body and this if you have high testosterone levels that can cause um, the hirsutism, which is the, the unwanted body hair, either on the face, the chest, the stomach, um, your thumbs, your toes. That kind of sounds really strange, but it happens. Um, unfortunately, a lot of women will choose to shave. Um, that's just, it's not a very good option. Um, you can wax, you can... Um, laser hair treatment or removal you can do that it's it's just not a pretty place to be in and i feel very blessed because i don't have to deal with that as much um sometimes i get some hair on my upper lip but that's that's an easy fix compared to some women who are dealing with um a full beard and i'm i'm not kidding when i talk about that i have seen some stories with women with that testimony so if you have high, high androgens, high testosterone, there is a medication 
Um, a popular one is called spironolactone, and I hope I'm saying that right. It's a very long word. It's actually a blood pressure medicine. So if you have high blood pressure, you may be put on that, but it will help suppress the androgens in the body. Um, so sometimes it will take, um, it will lessen the, the symptoms of body hair. It will lessen the symptoms of the male pattern balding on your head. Um, so those are, so that's an option as well. Acne is unfortunately a symptom. There is medication if, if you, if you have acne that is bad enough and you can go on medication. Otherwise, um, just washing your face, eating healthy, um, that will help clear it up as well. A lot of, a lot of women who have PCOS have problems with their insulin like I talked about yesterday. And if this is the case, some doctors will put these women on um, metformin, which is very popular. It will help level out the insulin. And it also allows these women to lose weight because having PCOS, generally speaking, not all cases, like I say, um, generally speaking, women are, um, they carry, the weight in the belly around the middle and weight gain is a symptom and it is very hard to lose weight with PCOS because of the insulin level which is out of whack and so metformin can come in and help lower those insulin levels to allow you to lose weight and it will also help slow that testosterone production as well so some of those other symptoms may clear up. Um, like I said, these, like if you stop taking these medications, those symptoms are going to come back. And if I can be quite honest with you, um, since I've already shared that I have gone off my birth control pill in January, I have had to deal with some of my symptoms that have come back. And I, for being on the pill for 10 years, I forgot what that was like. Um, it is very embarrassing and it's frustrating and it's overwhelming and it's emotional and um i didn't know i was gonna like get emotional about it now <laughs> but dealing with all of these things is it's hard and so if you are someone who is struggling with pcos i know what you're going through because i'm in a i'm in a um part of my life where i'm struggling with that weight loss and even though i know the weight, it doesn't matter about the number, I just wanna be healthy and I want my hormone levels to be normal. That weight loss, that number sometimes just gets stuck in our heads and it's very hard, very hard. So these medications can help, but as soon as we stop taking them, our symptoms are going to come back. So ultimately, this is why I have tried so hard to change my lifestyle is that diet and exercise can help the absolute most. It is the hardest thing that you can do. It is the hardest change. It's easy to remember a pill. Pop it in your mouth at the same time every day, no big deal. But to actually change your life, change the way you eat, change the restaurants that you eat at, change the way you shop at the grocery store, change your mindset. The mental shift is so difficult. And I struggle with that. I will be the first to admit that I struggle with that so bad. I can work out all day long, every single day, not a problem. I'm a very active person. When it comes to diet, that is where I struggle. I struggle, I want the sweets. And um, I can't help but think my hormones are the reason for that. And so to get my to be able to get my hormones in check, I have to make those healthier decisions. I have to give up temporarily. I mean, it is life, so I'm not going to give it up forever, but temporarily, that's what I need. And um, I keep going back to the verse in 1 Corinthians where it talks about, um, and I'm paraphrasing this, but Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. And I have to tell myself that all of the time. Sure, you can have that ice cream, but is it gonna benefit you? Are you gonna feel terrible after you eat it? And I have to weigh that decision. Do I want it or do I not want it? It is 
one of the biggest struggles for me and I know from the women that I work with that nutrition is one of the biggest struggles for them as well. And so that's why we get to be on this journey together <laughs> because we get to encourage and support one another and we can share when we're struggling and we can build one another up. And that is the power of this community that I have found to be so extremely helpful. Um, tomorrow I am going to share more about my lifestyle changes and what I have been making. Um, I've shared a little bit here and there, but not all in the same place. So you can come and hear um, how I eat, what I eat, other lifestyle changes that I have been making that have been helpful to me. I've had a lot of questions about how I got a regular cycle. And actually, my cycle's not regular. I just have been lucky to have a period the last three months. And I've never been so excited about that in my life. So while it's not regular, it's not like every 28 days, I at least am ovulating on my own and my body is working. So I'm going to be sharing exactly how I have been um, living the last couple of years and slowly been making changes to make this possible because I firmly believe that diet and exercise is the reason why I've had a period the last three months and hopefully this month too. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so join me tomorrow as I talk about that and give you some inside tips and an inside look at what my life looks like. It's not pretty, but it is helping, at least I think. So I hope you will join me and I hope that this was helpful. If I can answer any questions at all, please don't be afraid to reach out. Send me a message. Send me an email. Um, however you want to get a hold of me. Text me. Call me if you have my number. Um, but anyway, hope this was helpful and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!